there. Today I am going to show you how I made this clash bag and I will also be talking about what kind of frames you need to use. So we will start in a moment, get ready, have a cup of tea or coffee while you watch this video. Thank you. Okay, I am going to go first through um, the different kinds of frames that you can find on the market and how to choose them. I will talk in inches and then at the end I will give the measurements in centimeters. As you see here I have uh, different, two different sizes of clutch bags but the way you make it is just very simple and similar as long as you understand your measurements. The main thing to understand and was, this is the mistake that I made when I ordered some frames I ordered this frame which seemed the reasonable size to order but I didn't realize that this what it is called channel was a closed channel. A closed channel is a very narrow gap where you introduce the fabric, the purse itself, when you have finished making the pouch. But the closed channel only ends there on the side of the bar here. So you don't want a closed channel and this is very long as well. You want an open channel which comes from from this end, from here, from the very end, to this other end. And the gap of the channel is about a quarter of an inch. In centimeters it's about just over half a, a centimeter and that's what you need. I have, um, this is the, the frame we're using today. It's a, sm it's a smaller one, as you can see. But again, the channel is equally open by half uh, an inch from this end to this end. And um, when you uh, get a frame, the key thing to know what size your fabric needs to be is to measure the side plus the length plus the other side and add it all up. So in my case, I made some notes here, the side of my frame is two and three eighths inches, the length six and six eighths, and of course the other side is two and three eighths. So you have to add up the side plus the length plus the side and that gave me 11 and a half inches. So you need to add then about half an inch to allow for seam allowances. So that made the width of my fabric along the top, it made it 12 inches. Again, I will give the measurements in centimeters at the end. Now, for the length of the fabric, I found, I'll get my measuring tape, I made a pattern and I tried several sizes and you have to consider the length from the top of the frame all the way around here, gives me about 11 inches. 11 inches is a very good size uh, for this width of frame, which to remind you is 6 and 6 eighths. For this frame, which is longer, it's 8 inches, I tested it and I'm quite happy to have a length of fabric of 30, sorry, um, 13 inches. From that side all the way around, 13 inches, and that also allowing um, seam allowance. Right, so I'm using here a piece of a plain fabric which I have already prepared. So to recap, that will be the top of my bag, 12 inches and 11 inches down. You can write this down, it works very, very good. I don't think you have to, to take further measurements, but 11 inches uh, from top to bottom of your fabric is quite convenient for 
a frame that is six and six eighths long. As you see, my fabric here is plain. So if you wanted to use a pattern fabric, like I did here, you will have to obviously cut the fabric in half because if you don't, when you fold your, your bag, I, I have a sample here in paper, when you fold the fabric in half, one side of the pattern will be upside down. So what I did in this one, I cut two pieces of fabric of the width that I needed, I added extra for seam allowance, and then stitched them together, sew them together, so that gave me the length that I needed as if it were one, one plain fabric. And then you just fold it over and that you can make your bag. It's a simple detail, but when you're in gross sewing, you make mistakes, believe you me. <laughs> okay, so I have my fabric here. I already have it lined with some interfacing. And... Um, there are different kinds of interfaces that you can use, depending on so, all the fabric that you're using. This is um, an upholstery kind of fabric, nice and thick. And this is a cotton fabric. This is also cotton. But if you see, they all react in different ways because I use different materials. It's uh, not as rigid as, as the other one is. Of course, well, I'll take the paper out. But you can see it's not as rigid and it's not as rigid as this one. So consider what kind of fabric you're using to choose your materials and what effect you want to get. I am using here a four suede fabric and um, I chose for the interfacing uh, this uh, material. I have become quite fond of it it is, I have mentioned before, it is fusible on both sides and all you have to do is to cut the piece that you need, put it on the wrong side of your fabric and then iron the fabric on top as you would normally use, use it to iron a, an item of clothing. Leave it to rest for a bit and here it is. So that's my top, that's the bottom. My fabric will be folded like that to make the pouch. And I left um, a little gap on each side for seam allowance because um, this material is quite foamy, quite thick, and I didn't want too much of a bulk on the side. If you wanted to use different interfacings and uh, layers, layers, sorry. My other favorites are, I have mentioned before as well, um, a firm fusible interfacing, which is shiny on one side. This is the one with the glue. And you put this on the wrong side of your fabric, a damp cloth on top, and you press iron for 15 seconds at a time. And on top of that, which is what I did um, with this one. On top of that, I use fusible fleece, which has a rough side, and that's the one with the glue. And I just put it on top of the side that I had already lined with the firm interfacing. And again, with the damp cloth, I pressed for 15 seconds at a time all over the area. And there are other materials that I haven't come across with in the market area where I live, but there is something called Pelon 808 that you can find in the United States, I think. And you would use it in the same way. You would use the Pelon first and then the fusible fleece on top to line your fabric. Okay, um, then the next thing to do is to cut a piece for the lining for the inside of the bag of the same dimensions. I have mine here ready prepared. And what I am going to do now, I am going to 
pin them in place as you see this is it will be this is the right side of my fabric which will be the inside of my bag folding it like this in half I will pin it in place and I will go to the sewing machine and I will sew the sides this side and that side I will do the same with my main fabric I will pin it fold it of course you, you, you will sew everything on the reverse so there and here at this point you might want to add some uh, decorations to your bag in my case I don't have any available here but um, before you put your bag together you can add in the center a brooch or a pretty button an old piece of um, jewelry that you can adapt you might want to do that once uh, you have determined the, the dimensions of your uh, pouch so make sure that if you want to add something uh, decide before you put the bag together where it should go it will make your life much easier so if we stop here I will go and do some sewing and I'll come back I am back here with the my bit of fabric sewn on the sides and I just went ahead with this one and I did something else I will show you um, as you see the clash bags have a, a flat bottom there and that's what I did I folded the fabric after sewing on the sides I'll show you what I did I am pressing with my fingers to determine the middle of the bag and then I am matching uh, this stitch stitching with the fold that I had inside just there like that and I shall pin it in place yeah it's right and I will do the same with this corner the seam matching that fold so I'm going to mark here center your ruler or measuring tape the, we're going to draw a line across uh, which is about um, one and six eighths of an inch sorry one two three four five sorry one and five eighths of an inch which is about four centimeters marking it there yeah one and six eighths of an inch or four centimeters I marked it there and I did it here as well on, on each side yeah. so I'm going to sew across there as I did in this one that I have already here can you see and then you just cut the excess like so we will turn it inside out to show you make sure the points are nice and neat out and we have a boxy bottom there flat bottom I will do the same with the lining and I will be back again okay I am back and what we need now is to put this inside the lining like you would do with any bag so the right side out into the inside of the lining so basically we have the two right sides uh, fabrics touching each other and we will pin this in place or hold it with a with a little peg if you have and we're going to sew all the way around 
but we're going to leave a gap here in the middle. So I'm taking my frame and we will find the middle of the bag. Let's identify 28, so about that's my center. I shall put a pin there so I don't lose it. And this is my uh, frame. So I am centering the frame with the center of my bag and I shall mark or put a pin. I want to leave a gap so that I can turn the bag inside out. So if that is the center and I just put a pin around here and another one about there I will sew from from this pin all the way around and I stop here and I will have a space big enough to turn the bag inside out and when we put the bag together it will be uh, hidden so I shall do that next I am back again and I did the stitching I can now remove the pins and I will turn my bag inside out I just back stitch here on each end so when I do this I don't um, uh, damage the stitching pull them undone here it comes and this is my opening I am going to fold this bit of fabric towards the inside just finger pressing to follow the fold of the initial stitching and I will do the same with the front and you can pin them together or pack them together like so there and I am going to top stitch I'm going to close it just by, by stitching all the way around I mean on the, closing the gap now if you want you could also top stitch on top on all the edge which helps, uh, helps um, keep the shape of the bag so also before stitching it I will do that and before stitching it I'm going to press with my fingers first and I'm going and then I'm going to iron the fabric in place so it gets nice and flat all around so see you in a moment and here I am I have sewn close the gap there I shall trim these threads and what we have to do now is to uh, determine where the frame will go it has to sit like this um, now this is where the open channel comes into place because this should fit inside that gap that I showed you earlier quite simple like that like so um, for this project I normally use this glue Kutterman HT2 uh, you need to use a glue I, some people mention something called E600 I have never used it uh, I have never tried even to get it because I'm very happy with this glue it has to be a glue suitable for not only fabric but metal so it's normally the kind of flu, uh, sorry, glue that has some kind of um, oh how do you call it um, oh f f not fusible these things that set a fire uh, that it smells very strong and um, you cannot use just any any strong glue because some of the super glues that we tend to use sometimes are very liquid and it will soak your fabric when it comes in, in contact with it so if I show you this glue I have a piece of remand of fabric here it's quite thick you see and that's 
that's the consistency of the glue you need to use. What I tend to do sometimes uh, is to cover the frame and sometimes the frames come with a very thin layer of plastic for protection. I advise you to keep it on until you finish uh, making the bag. And in this case mine doesn't have one, so I have this other one prepared. And I put this um, sticky tape, which is, is a low tack tape. It is the kind that electricians use. You see, it comes loose very easy very easily. Uh, you can use decorators, uh, low tack tape as well, which is like a paper tape. Don't use cello tape because that can stick quite hard. It's mainly just uh, to make sure that you don't have any problems uh, when you apply the glue, because sometimes if you put too much glue, it will come out and damage your fabric. So I'll show you what I do. I'm going to use this jar there. I'm going to squeeze some glue in. It's normally like one dollop at a time. So I'm starting there. I'll squeeze and up until I do all the channel. And there we go. There. Uh, I think I need a little bit more of that. I shall leave it there. If you have a jar um, or something round, like I have a tape roll here, I always leave the frames there uh, to dry a bit. So uh, my recommendation is to wait about 10 to 15 minutes, depending on the environment you are in. It might be too cold, too hot, and come back to it because at this point the glue is too runny you see so i'll show you in a moment how it has to be so let's let it dry for a bit i am back after about 10 minutes and i think my glue might be right can you see that it's much thicker now That's uh, the consistency you want to get. So I am ready to put my bag together. And here it is. I shall also make a mark in the frame where the center is. That's the middle of my frame. Because I wanted to line with this mark that I did of the center of the bag. So there I go, nice and gently, and I'm pushing, open the frame a bit, pushing into the gap. Be careful with bits of glue that might come out at the end, on the end of, or into your fingers from the back. And what I normally use as well, if necessary, um, as you can see, the, the, the bag slid onto the frame quite nicely but if you ever need to do any adjustment I keep um, old credit cards and I cut them in pieces like this and um, like this one as well and I also keep at hand a couple of blunt knives in case I need to push the bag into the frame a bit more for whatever reason and um, always go to the back I can see that my stitching is a bit exposed there so I'm going to push it in gently when you do this make sure that you don't drag out glue attached to this uh, utensil you're using so it seems to be okay and the, the front seems to be okay as well Oh, the stitching is showing as well there, so I will push it a bit more inside the frame. I'm happy with that. And what I also do, just, just because I am like that, I secure them with a the peg there. 
a laundry bag on each side there oh, there's a bit of glue coming out here I will scrap it on up so there we are, I shall leave it to dry um, I normally like to leave it for a few hours to set so in my time it will be tomorrow so but I will see you in a moment and let's just let it dry like that I am back now and after several hours of having <clears throat> the glue uh, to set there and you can see how easily I can remove this uh, plastic uh, tape this um, tape is completely optional I'm just showing you because at the beginning uh, I had um, to practice quite a few times until I got it right and this came very handy so what I did <clears throat> as you remember I glued this part first and then while when that bit was dry I just open the frame it's, look how easily it opens like this like that <clears throat> and um, put glue on that side and I just inserted it making sure that the the frame was centered properly in relation to the seam and there you have two pieces two sides attached and just to finish our pairs just lift this up like so and push the sides towards the inside keeping the frame out make sure that you <coughs> with your fingers fix the edge properly where the seams are and there you are you have your pairs and um, I found this brooch that initially I could have as I said before attached it before I did the handbag and I think this might go quite nice with it like so I would probably ask my husband to remove this um, pin that he has at the back and I will try to sew it in place so I hope you have enjoyed this uh, I just want to go back a little bit to uh, the frames so if you if you want to make a clash bag I would recommend uh, this style of frame this is about 8 inches long this is just over 6 inches uh, the key thing is that it has an open channel that one there and that the sides are short sometimes if you buy online uh, they will not tell you this, the length of the sides but if you compare it to this one which is the one that you don't want to buy this is the one with the closed channel you can see that the side is quite long in relation to the frame itself so um, this is something to, to keep in, in consideration so basically the side shouldn't be longer than three inches which is about six centimeters right so I hope that this is uh, clear um, it's, as you saw the procedure is very easy and next to this I'm just going to attach a couple of pictures with diagrams and the measurements in inches and centimeters um, in re for these uh, two size, sizes of frames that I have here but um, if you follow this procedure you should be able to make a clash bag with any other size of frame that you might find so I hope you have enjoyed this and I'll see you soon again thank you bye